So it would seem based on this conversation that the rumors you're not exactly thrilled with vice presidential life might be true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, not at all, John. (laughs) No, I love doing all of the stuff that no one else wants to do. Let's get into it. What a week. Here in our nation's capital was a week marked by an ugly, performative, embarrassing, racist spectacle. I'll try to be more specific. (laughs) The Senate Judiciary Committee held confirmation hearings for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to join the Supreme Court. somehow managed to be worse than we could have imagined and exactly as bad as we expected. (laughs) Here is a video of someone who has probably once said bless her heart about a service worker she had fired for speaking Spanish in the club dining room, Senator Marsha Blackburn. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N- not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? No, we cannot. All we can say for sure is Kate Blanchett played one in Carol. That's all we know scientifically. John Cornyn complained to Judge Jackson about the Supreme Court's ruling establishing marriage equality, saying the decision in Obergefell conflicts with some people's sincerely held religious beliefs, replied Jackson. Well, Senator, that is the nature of a right. (laughs) Then Senator Tom Tillis attempted a gotcha. How can I not read this to say that Perhaps they should be released, irrespective of the, the crime for which they've been charged. Senator, if you read two more sentences down, that is precisely what I focus on. This is a case, United States versus Wiggins, where I was uh, setting up my analysis as to why I would not be releasing Mr. Wiggins in this case. He was arguing Uh, essentially what I said in that statement. It's going to be some, it's going to be accent work. Just just bear with me. Uh, Mr. Dickens. (laughs) Mr. Dickens, your novel begins with the phrase, it was the best of times. How can we not read that as an endorsement of the excesses of the French Revolution? Senator Lindsey Graham took a break from praying and weeping in a room full of doll heads and posters of Montgomery Cliff to participate in the hearing. He said this. How would you feel that if I'd had a letter from somebody accusing you of something, a crime or misconduct, for weeks, and I give it to Senator Durbin just before this hearing's over, and not allow you to comment on the accusation. How would you feel about that? Senator, I'm I'm not sure. I don't understand the context of the question. Well, let me, did you watch the Kavanaugh hearings? No, sir. It's a tough break for Graham. This would have gone a bit better if Jackson were up to speed on the Hannity extended universe. It's like hypothetically, but then describing something in great detail. It's not a hypothetical. It's just in the, it's the spirit of a hypothetical, but it's describing a real event. Afterward, Senator Patrick Leahy called Lindsey Graham's questioning reprehensible. He said this. Republican member who went way over the time allotted to him, uh, ignored the rules of the committee, badgered the nominee, would not even let her answer the questions. Uh, that, that, I've never seen anything like that. I've been here 48 years. Doesn't seem like you've been here 48 years. (laughs) 
it almost makes me want to skip our weekly happy hour. But I won't, because our trivia team's been crushing it. Over the course of the week, several senators went over their time, not to mention all the meandering, absurd lines of questioning, which Senator Dick Durbin kind of interjected to stop. Sort of. You know how they get, said Senator Durbin. Sometimes you just gotta let them tucker themselves out. <laughs> then you can put them down for a nap. My sweet, sweet boys. That's, that's why we got the above ground pool. <laughs> Durbin later called the Republican shit show a means to showcase talking points for the November election, a testing ground for conspiracy theories. At least that's what it said on the shirts Marjorie Taylor Greene was selling out front. The hearings were basically Milan Fashion Week, but for right-wing misinformation, everyone will be obsessed with come fall. Autumn 22 is all about racist babies, gay grooming, and chunky knits. Later, during his questioning, doing the world's shittiest baton pass from Marsha Blackburn, Ted Cruz declared, I think you're the, the only Supreme Court nominee in history who's been unable to answer the question, what is a woman? Someone tell me, Ted continued, what is a woman? Heidi, my wife is a woman because she uses the thimble or the dog when we play Monopoly, not the ship or the car, but why? <laughs> Speaking of the devil, employees of a Montana airport were forced to call security on Ted Cruz after the senator got into an argument with airline staff after missing his flight. Apparently, Ted Cruz says that line every hero says, do you know who I am? Remember, it was barely two weeks ago that Ted Cruz said, almost without exception, every time I'm on an airplane, either the captain or the flight attendant will come up to me, will hug me and say, thank you for fighting for us. So it is likely Ted Cruz missed his flight because they wouldn't stop hugging and thanking him. Also, in fairness to Ted, it's easy to accidentally call security on him. He should put out a PSA that explains it's just how he looks. There is no need to tell the authorities that Bob's big boy has turned halfway into a werewolf. I don't like his politics, so he's ugly. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> ugly fuck. And Judge Jackson spent the hearings pushing back on hateful bullshit and disrespectful badgering, but Cory Brooker brought Katanji Brown Jackson to her tears with his encouragement, calling her a harbinger for hope and telling her, you have earned this spot. Today, you're my star. You are my harbinger of hope. This country is getting better and better and better. And when that final vote happens and you ascend onto the to the highest court in the land, I'm gonna rejoice. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the greatest country in the world, the United States of America, will be better because of you. Thank you. It was a beautiful speech and shameless bid to win back Rosario Dawson. <laughs> As Republican senators sought to undermine a liberal justice on the committee, Republican Senator Mike Braun accidentally explained why. So you would be okay with the Supreme Court leaving the question of interracial marriage to the states? Yes. <laughs> okay. <sighs> he went in great detail about his logic. He explained it very precisely. He was actually quite eloquent in explaining why he wants to overturn all of these precedents. He later claimed it was a misunderstanding, but he did not misunderstand it. He was very clear. This wasn't like an oopsie-daisy. This is like getting caught having an affair and saying you tripped. <laughs> he understood it. He just forgot to be chill about it. Liz Cheney told Meet the Press that the January 6th committee will be releasing new information as well as potentially issuing legislative recommendation. What is there left to learn? Don't we have all the intel? Mike Pence was in on the Capitol riot the whole time, not out of a desire for power, but because he loves erotic asphyxiation. <laughs> that would be news. Said Cheney, we're looking at things like, do we need additional enhanced criminal penalties for the kind of supreme dereliction of duty that you saw in President Trump 
when he refused to tell the mob to go home after he provoked the attack on the Capitol. That's right, additional enhanced criminal penalties, meaning this would be in addition to, and more extreme than, all the many criminal penalties President Trump has faced so far. Finally, we'll add more laws for Trump to break and face no fucking consequences for. How many laws does this guy have to break without being punished before he gets that free sub? <laughs> and then, breaking news just before we recorded this episode Thursday, Bob Woodward and Robert Costas reported in the Washington Post on a text thread for the fucking ages between Clarence Thomas's wife and right-wing super freak Ginny Thomas and Trump's White House chief of staff Mark Meadows. In addition to QAnon conspiracy theories, there are text exchanges like this. Help this great president stand firm, Mark. You are the leader with him who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. Then Meadows wrote Thomas on November 24th, this is a fight of good versus evil. Evil always looks like the victor until the king of king triumphs. Do not grow weary in well-doing. The fight continues. I have staked my career on it. Well, at least my time in D.C. on it. Sure have, you fuck. <laughs> Thomas then replied, Thank you. Needed that. Ew. <laughs> not the most important part, but it's like, oh, you're privileging your own experience of this? of our election. Uh, this plus a conversation with my best friend just now, I will try to keep holding on, America is worth it. Now, two possibilities here. Either Ginny Thomas is the sort of person who is still in high school, who constantly talks about their best friend, or that's clearly an oblique fucking reference to Clarence Thomas, who is currently, well. <laughs> Don't keep it inside. Keep it. Pray so hard your hands hurt. No, 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 no. What are we even talking about? It's not clear. Not good for us inside. Everybody chill. You know the press conference where, Ju where Giuliani like leaked and the whole thing was nuts and their, their whole plan for the Kraken completely fell apart? Twist, she thought it was great. <laughs> she thought it was working. The dripping, the nonsense, the cracking, having no information, being in front of a fucking landscaping business, it all fucking clicked in for her. No notes from Ginny Thomas. <laughs> Speaking of Trump, the New York Times published a letter from prosecutor Mark Pomerantz explaining that he believed Trump is guilty of numerous felonies and that he resigned after Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg refused to indict Trump, calling the decision a grave failure of justice. It is disturbing how open and shut the case is. The footage from those ring cameras clearly show Trump stealing those Amazon boxes. <laughs> Trump also rescinded his endorsement of Mo Brooks for our Alabama Senate seat, declaring in a statement that Mo Brooks of Alabama made a horrible mistake recently when he went woke and stated, referring to the 2020 presidential election scam, put that behind you, put that behind you. Mo Brooks, Mo resistance. <laughs> I'm sorry. In a remarkable statement, Utah's Republican governor, Spencer Cox, cited trans teen suicide rates as one of the reasons he vetoed an anti-trans sports bill. In his statement, Cox explained, Four kids, and only one of them playing girls' sports. That's what all this is about. Four kids who aren't dominating or winning trophies or taking scholarships. Four kids who are just trying to find some friends and feel like they are part of something. Four kids trying to get through each day. Rarely has so much fear and anger been directed at so few. I don't understand what they are going through or why they feel the way they do, but I want them to live. And all the research shows that even a little acceptance and connection can reduce suicide significantly. It is a moving and powerful statement in which he absolutely roasts those four trans kids. <laughs> These bumbling dweebs can't dribble for shit and I love them. <laughs> I'm getting a we suck at sports. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that that's true. I don't, I don't want you to internalize that. We don't suck at sports. We'd be good at sports. Come on. I mean, what happened? You do suck at sports. So you got cut from the field hockey team. Uh-huh. But do you think you, and now do you think that maybe uh, people were mad because there was someone who also got cut but would have been cut a little bit less because of you? 
I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're doing great. I think you're a great athlete. And I don't believe that you're not good at it, field hockey. I, it was probably a really hard year. Was it a hard year? You were 11. Okay. Do you think it was a good idea for me to come over here? <laughs> I know you. Colin, holy shit. Colin, it's so good to see you. Colin's here. Hi, Colin. NASA added 65 planets to their exoplanet archive, which is, seems like they should slow down. We're not done destroying this one yet. <laughs> While reposting a Pete Davidson Instagram video of Scott Disick napping through the Scorsese movie The King of Comedy, Britney Spears said, no idea who these people in the video are, but it made me laugh so hard. So the conservatorship wasn't all bad, you know? <laughs> And finally, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, the snail wrangler from Ben Affleck and Ana de Armas' new erotic thriller, Deep Water, praised Affleck's exceptionally good handling of the gastropods on set. Now, before you go thinking this is a compliment, you should know that this, the question asked of the snail, snail wrangler was, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> Here to discuss her experience as second in line and how she's handling the seemingly nonstop criticism of everything she does or doesn't do, it's Madam Vice President herself, Kamala Harris. The Vice President, everybody. Oh, hi, John. Sweet, sweet, taller than I expected, John. <laughs> yeah, I just want to clarify, okay? I'm actually here to explain how absolutely amazing things are going in the Biden administration. Great. Thank you for standing. You're welcome. Uh, I love being Vice President. Well, okay. well, we're not talking about that other stuff. Okay. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, Mad Madam Vice President, and for giving us your time. It seems like it's uh, nonstop over there at the White House, so I'm sure you'd rather be relaxing, getting some sleep. <laughs> what, John? <laughs> no, I feel bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Okay. I mean, sure, I wake up screaming at 3.30 a.m. every day. But that is just because it's the witching hour and I live with ghosts. And because of this recurring dream I keep having. You know, I'm throwing a birthday party for Emmanuel Macaron, okay? And there aren't enough tests. And no one has the code to the safe with the test, except for, of course, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but guess who's not answering her phone? <laughs> <laughs> and Jill Biden turns to me in the dream, okay? Mm -hmm. And for some reason, she's in a navy dress white, like Demi Moore in A Few Good Men. Okay, and she says, you weren't prom queen in high school, were you? And that's every morning for me. <laughs> Anywho, I am so excited to be here in D.C. <laughs> I'm Woo! just kind of reeling that you wake up every day at 3.30 a.m. Look, it's the job, John, okay? I wake up at 3.30 a.m. I check to see if I'm president. <laughs> I check to see if I'm president, and usually I'm not, okay? Uh -huh. I read an extra hard copy of the New York Times that my staff has already checked and removed any mention of my name from. <laughs> And then I use a super soaker to spray matzo ball soup at my COVID-infested husband. <laughs> From at least 10 yards away, okay? Don't the matzo balls get jammed? <laughs> yeah, John, I put the matzo balls in the super soaker. No, come on. 
You're right, I'm sorry. I was the Attorney General of California, John. I am not an idiot, okay? I shoot the broth and toss the balls. Get real. I'm sorry, you're right. I should get, I gotta get serious. Is this serious? You're right. So it would seem, based on this conversation, that the rumors you're not exactly thrilled with vice presidential life might be true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, not at all, John. (laughs) No, I love doing all of the stuff that no one else wants to do. Okay, I mean, the stuff that I love doing. Sure, would I have loved to have to add a Nordic country to my portfolio as VP? Of course, I love the Nordics. They have the best treadmills, okay? But, but that's not what happened. You, you took on the Northern Triangle as part of the immigration portfolio. Oh, yes. <laughs> the immigration portfolio, that famous launching pad for such presidents as Marco Rubio and no one. <laughs> You know, the right-wingers say, you know, go to the border, go to the border. I go to borders. And what do they say? The nerve of her going to that bookstore years after it's closed. Yeah, I guess immigration is a thorny issue. You know, why couldn't I have had infrastructure, you know? They get to hold shovels, wear a hard hat, get to say how much they love traveling with Chaston on the Amtrak. But that's not the call I get. No, no, no new highway off ramp for Kamala. (laughs) My phone rings and it's guess who? Poland. I hope you didn't make things Warsaw over there. (laughs) They loved it. (laughs) That sucks, John. Yeah. And you know what? I am not the border czar. That didn't come up. Okay. But uh, no one said you were, but I guess the fr- that's a phrase you were trying to avoid. According to a new book about the first year of the Biden presidency, this will not pass. Uh, it's uh, that you were trying to avoid that term, you know? Oh, yeah. That book. They also claim you got into it with Anna Wintour over your Vogue cover, which featured you wearing jeans. Oh, no, because why would I want to be on the cover of Vogue in a magnificent couture? gown, John. No, 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 put me in jeans like the school's coolest music teacher. So- this isn't Abbott Elementary, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't seem happy about it. But of course, I'm in the wrong for having an argument with Anna Winter, the person who literally inspired a titular character by the name of the devil <laughs> when he wore Prada. Mm-hmm. That's actually a good point. You don't have a movie about you at all. Not yet, John. But if I did, it would be an ensemble of this great team fighting to bring our country back from the terrible crises and chaos of the Trump years. You know, I like to say that 2020 was the Control Z election, okay? And now together, we have to make sure Americans don't hit Control Y. (laughs) <laughs> undo not redo as i always say you know control alt delete but did it bother you that in the book dr jill biden was worried about picking you because you insulted then vice president biden during the debates oh that's water under the bridge i mean it's a bridge over troubled water for sure <laughs> but still if you wanted somebody who never criticized joe biden i guess your choices would be jill biden or their dog that bites people. (laughs) I have been bitten by that dog so many times. But we're not supposed to talk about it. You know, being vice president is a hard job. Do you worry that the stress is getting to you? Like in that clip where you preet the phrase, the significance of the passage of time four times. Yeah, every word I utter is scrutinized. 
You know, every offhand comment, every laugh, <laughs> every purchase. There was a two-day story in right-wing media because I bought a $200 copper pot. Oh, the audacity. Buying a nice pan on a trip to Paris. What an asshole I am, <laughs> right? But it's fine. I love the job. I'm honored. <laughs> just, I hear you laughing and smiling, but it just doesn't seem like you actually feel that way. Oh, now you're telling me how I sound. Typical. No, no, no I'm sorry. Typical. I don't mean that. I just, I just mean I, what I mean is, what I mean is, it just sounds like there's no winning in this job. A job that was famous for being terrible before the internet. Before there was a right-wing echo chamber watching your every move. Waiting to turn any slip, real or imagined, they're often imagined, into a day or week or month long story. A job that was ill-defined and mocked before it was held by a black woman who is presumed by half of the media to lack authority by her mere existence. The same racism that is so thoroughly soaked into our politics that a bunch of dumb ass white Republican senators think they can talk down to, reprimand, insult, and smear the soon-to-be justice, Katanji Brown-Jackson. Yes. Anyways, the point is I love the job. <laughs> I love the job, John. It's well, at least you get to live in the Naval Observatory. It smells like Dick Cheney in there. It really does, and no one knows why. It can't be removed by conventional cleaning methods. It's not in the fabrics. Scientists think it might be part of his soul. It's a hard job. Oh. oh, look, a text from the big guy, Joe Biden. It's a photo of a note that he wrote on the back of a penny saver. He's trying. <laughs> He's getting better. It's my next assignment. <laughs> okay. Here's to it being a, opening a fire station. Opening fire station, opening fire station. Give me your good energy. Fuck. <laughs> it's climate change. Oh no. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris, everybody. <laughs> Guys, everybody, give it up for Allison Reese. Thank you. Oh.